So let's talk a little bit more about p-values. Remember that a p-value is the probability of seeing our observed result or a result even more extreme. So that's just the chances of us finding that based on random chance, um, that result or more extreme. It basically tells us how surprised we are to get our data given that the null hypothesis is true. So we just looked at one where the crack rate was 20%. So we're saying, given that the crack rate is 20%, how likely is it that we found a crack rate of 17%? That was our 6.7% was our probability that if the 20% were true, that if it actually is a crack rate of 20%, 6.7% of the time, our sample will give us 17%. So, if p-value is very small, either our null hypothesis, this is null, is not true or something remarkable occurred. Um, we would then accept that the alternative hypothesis is true instead. So again, our 6.7, that was one of those that was sort of in the middle. I don't know, is that too small or not small enough? If our p-value is large, so that is if we said the 90%, then we're not surprised because if the crack rate is actually 20% and I found 17% and it said 90% of the time that occurs, then I'm like, well, what's the big deal? It's gonna occur 90% of the time. So I'm not going to reject the alternative or the null hypothesis. So I'm gonna say, I don't have enough um, information to say that 20% isn't true. Notice we never accept the null hypothesis. So how do we decide what do we compare our p-value against? We compare it to something called an alpha level. So our alpha level is essentially the ruler by which we're going to measure our p-value against. So generally, and if they don't tell you, generally we're using an alpha level of 0.05. So the alpha level of 0.05 means if a value is less than 0.05, that's very, very small, and we're going to be surprised and we're going to reject the null. If it's greater than that, like our 6.7 that we just found, then we're not super surprised by it and we're going to fail to reject the null, okay? So it really base, is based on whatever our alpha level is. Now, if you need to be more precise based on whatever the context is, they might use a small alpha. If we don't, if it's not like a life or death situation, um, maybe we use a larger alpha of like 10%. So let's look at that um, example that we just looked at a few minutes ago where we found a p-value of 0.067 or 6.7%. So we're gonna compare this against an alpha level of 0.05. And what that means is if we get a, one that is less than 0.05, then we're going to reject because we're gonna say, well, that's really out of control. If it's greater than 0.05, then we're going to fail to reject because it's not surprising to us. So if we compare our 6.7 against 0.05, or 6.7 is higher, and therefore we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that means we're failing to reject that the crack rate is 20% because that was our null. We're saying, um, we don't have enough information to say that the crack rate is different than 20. So there's insufficient evidence to suggest that the crack rate is below 20%. We'll talk more about conclusions in a little bit. Now, I wanna show you this using critical values because we've talked about critical values. Now, if I'm trying to use an alpha level of 0.05, notice that I'm looking at 0.95 to the right. So I'm saying, okay, Anything over here, this is expected. But if it's less than that, then it's not expected, and therefore I'm going to reject. Well, now if I get my z-score was negative 1.5, that's right here. So that's in the expected region. If it were on the other side, then I would say, oh, I wasn't expecting that to happen, and therefore I'm going to reject that it's actually 20%. Now, what if we changed our alpha level and now our alpha level is 10%. So if we're using 10%, I'm comparing 6.7%, which is less than 10% or written as decimals, 0 0.067 is less than 0.1. And because it's less than the alpha level, again, now I'm surprised. 
So now I can say I'm going to reject the null. In context, that means that I'm rejecting that the crack rate is actually 20. I have found enough evidence to suggest that the true crack rate is actually lower than 20% because that's what I found based on my alpha level of 0.1. Now again, if I were using critical values, which some people have you do instead of using a p-value, then our z-score was negative 1.5, which again is right here. Notice on my new picture, using that 90% to the right, my new picture, negative 1.5, is no longer in the OK region. Now I'm saying this is not OK, and I'm going to reject the null. So this is sort of the expected, and this is the not expected.